Hello, I'm Chip Stites, and this is The Laughing Retirement. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, right now, the markets aren't giving us a whole lot to laugh about. So I thought it was time to do a market update and take a look at where we are and take a look at what we're doing in order to solve some of those problems. So here we go. I'm going to share a screen with you. Yeah, we do. We're going to do a market update for October 24th, 2023. This has been an unexpected year. It was not what we thought we happened when we started this year. But the Fed is still fighting inflation. And things are changing rapidly. So we thought we'd take a look at what we need to do and how we need to do it. Now, in January, we looked at the January effect and we thought, hey, it's going to be a good year. The Dow was supposed to be up 10%. The, the Russell 2000 was supposed to be up 9.65. The, the S&P 500 up 6. The Dow up 2. And we thought the pie portfolio would be up about 2.35, give or take. And we've learned over time that the Dow tends to react, or excuse me, the pie portfolio tends to, be, tends to react more like the Russell 2000 and the S&P 500 than it does the Dow. And we can talk about that at a different time. So while the expectations in January were pretty good, it's kind of not what's happened so far. I went back and I looked at the highs of each of the indexes, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Russell 2000. Now, from its high, April 1st, 2022, the Dow is down about 10%. Year to date, as of the 23rd or the 24th, it was down 0.64%. The NASDAQ from its highs down 19%. And year to date, it's up 24. Now, you'd say, well, the NASDAQ, if it's down 19, but this year it's up 24, it should be back where it was before. No, it's not how it works. Because from its high, the Dow is down 19%, even though we are up 24% for the year. And that just proves that when, when you think something's continually going up, and, and, and you're trying to make gains, that's not always what's happening to you. So the idea that you're up this year is not really true if you look at it from the point of view of November 9th, 2022. Now, S&P 500 is down 12% from its high, but year to date, it's up 11. The Russell 2000 is down 29%. And year to date, it was down 4.85%. So the markets are in huge fluctuation right now. And I think it's time to take a look at the whys of that. So what's going on? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is raising rates. And, and Chairman Powell seems to be a little surprised at how sticky inflation is. I'm not. And I'm not because we had artificially low rates for two decades. And we think we're going to fix it in a year, year and a half? Yeah, I don't think so. I think this could go on for a while. Now, the conference board, which is an economic board that basically um, tells you what's going on now, what they believe is going to happen, believes that the second half of 2024 will be better because by then, inflation will be under control and the Federal Reserve can start lowering rates again. I don't know if that's true because of everything that's going on, but I like the idea of markets going up. And I like the idea that the second half of 2024 is going to be better than the first half of 2024 or what we're in today. Now, on the world stage, you've got a Ukrainian war that the US seems to want to start defunding. This isn't going to change anytime soon. Putin has not gotten what he wanted. And unless there is some kind of a negotiated settlement about territory and negotiated ceasefire, this is going to continue. Then when you see that Ukraine is beginning to evacuate children from certain parts of the country, not good. The Israeli Hamas, Hamas war, well, it's a hotbed of problems sitting in a hotbed of problems. This has been going on since 1948. We're not doing anything really differently. And supposedly the cause of all this was that 
Israel was negotiating with Saudi Arabia and a couple other countries to be recognized, to kind of end the problems. Well, the Palestinians and Hamas didn't want that. So now you got a problem. Nobody wants an increased war because the people that always lose are you and me. I don't care where we are. It's, it's not the rich. It's not the powerful. They leave. It's the everyday person like you and me. They're the ones that have the problems in the middle of a war. So hopefully those two problems will get some kind of settlement here in the next six months to a year. But we shall see. Then you have what I would say is the real problem. You have Congress, the 2023 edition. You have a leadership problem, a debt ceiling problem, an election problem. And oh, by the way, could this get any messier? Leadership is a real problem. Why is that? Markets absolutely hate cons inconsistency. And no leadership makes for inconsistency. And nothing gets done. It's often been said all the way from Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, politics is a dirty business. Unfortunately, if we're world leaders, we're airing our dirty laundry in front of the whole world. And all that tells them is we got a problem. On November 17th, we have a debt ceiling limit coming up. I remain an optimist. I hope that this will be a problem because a shutdown would prove that the powers that be aren't managing themselves very well. And after all, this whole thing's about power, isn't it? Because that's what politics is all about. And some people, they, want, they would welcome a shutdown, would show how powerful they were. I guess I'm not one of those. The election. Right now, we have a lack of leadership on both sides. We have a lack of a ticket that's known on both sides. We have one front runner with legal issues, and another front runner has questions of competency from his own party. In short, we got a mess. So what do you do about this mess? Well, here's what we do with a perpetual income engine. Number one, one of the things you're reading today is, well, this is what to do now. I would rather set up a portfolio so that I didn't have to do anything now. I would rather set it up for doing what American companies do best. You might need to lower risk. I would suggest that. That means lowering your beta and the beta is risk compared to the S&P 500. We like our beta around 0.70%, in other words, 30% less than the S&P 500. Get rid of any investment with high turnover because high turnover equals low return and returns are already low enough. Consistency is the key. So you look for things that give you consistency with little expense. Warren Buffett said it best. The enemy of the equity investor is expenses and fees. So if you get, excuse me, the enemy of the equity investor is expenses and emotions. And when somebody says, when you read something, this is what you need to do now. This is what you need to buy. This is what you need to sell. That's emotional, and that is a mistake. And when you're buying things that, that charge you for what they are doing and then return you less than their benchmark, and believe me, right now there are over 400 benchmarks out there, but there are only two or three to look at. The Dow, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2004. Those are the only things you should be measuring yourself against. Your small caps against the Russell. Your tech against the NASDAQ. Your everyday whole portfolio against the S&P 500. If you're not getting an S&P 500 for taking S&P risk, something is wrong. We can make that right for you. Now, the key is I want you to think long-term, not short-term. I want you to set up your portfolio so that every twist and turn of the market, because there are going to be some, 
You don't have to change some things. You fix your portfolio for forever. You don't fix your portfolio for today. It's like right now, AI is the big thing. Buy AI. You got to have this. You got to have that. You got to have the five AI stocks. It's like the wild west of Bitcoin. You're not hearing a whole lot about Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever it is, HNT or whatever it is, non-fungible tokens. You're hearing less about that because enough people lost enough money to begin to stay away from it. Is it probably going to, is something going to come out of it in the future? Yes, probably. But I don't know what. And I need to live today. I need my portfolio to work today. Now, as that gets straightened out and as AI gets straightened out, there will be things in the future that you'd like to buy. But buy consistency. Don't buy promise. Because when somebody says this stock is going to go up and you go out and buy it, do they have any responsibility to you? It's your money. It's not anybody else's money. Nobody goes to Wall Street to make you rich. When the market drops, you still get your dividends. When the market goes down, you still get your dividends. Now, if the market goes down 20 or 30%, like 2008, the average dividend goes down 10. And in 2008, 63% of the companies that said they were going to raise their dividends still raised them in one of the worst markets in history. What's that tell you? The difference is companies plan for dividends. They already have the money there to pay them very often or to pay most of them very often. And while they would plan for growth, they can't control it. Dividends they can control. Dividends you can control. You can control your life and your income and the growth of your portfolio by using dividends. A guy named Mark Lich Lichtenfeld wrote a book called Get Rich with Dividends. David Bowson, The Case for Dividend Growth. Read Jeremy Siegel's book, read Warren Buffett. Why do you think he doesn't pay out his dividends? Because he's making a ton of money from them. Well, what's on sale today? What's on sale today is REITs and utilities. You should probably look at um, Nextera. You should probably look at Clorox. You should probably look at a number of REITs. Um, I like Getty. I have for a long time. GTY. Symbol for Nextera is NEE. The symbol for Clorox is CLX. Now, what's the cost of buying those? Zero. What's the cost of holding them? Zero. What are the expenses involved? Zero. When we manage people's money, we manage it for less than 0.05%. That's the internal fees of our management cost right there. Now we charge a little bit for that, but that's not important right now. What is important is that you begin working with your portfolio in a way that you feel comfortable. Now, if you go to your financial advisor and you don't understand what he or she says, that would make me uncomfortable. Let's take a look here. What can you do about this mess? I want you to lower your risk. I want you to get rid of any investment with high, with high turnover. I want you to find consistency in your portfolio. I want you to get rid of fees. I want you to think long-term, not short-term. You fix your portfolio forever. You don't fix your portfolio today for today because today is going to change. When the market drops, you'll still get paid your dividends. Look for the sales. And right now, there are sales. Would you like some help? Do you feel like you're not sure what's going on? Well, here's what I'd like you to do. And it's free. We're going to start free. Watch the free videos. Watch the Laughing Retirement Financial videos. It will give you an idea of who I am, how we manage money, and what we can do for you. Number two, book a 20-minute chat. Book a chat with me. You'll find out I'm not any pressure. I'm going to give you ideas and things you can do. You do what you want to do. If I can help, that's absolutely wonderful. I believe my job is to help you get rid of advisors, myself included. 
I want you to watch the free investing masterclass and the fee video. Those two videos, I want you to watch all of them. But in particular, the fee video and the investing masterclass. Now, you can also write me at info, I-N-F-O, at the Laughing Retirement. That's info at the Laughing Retirement. And below this, you'll see the Calendly link and, and, and you'll see the info at the Laughing Retirement. I hope you've enjoyed this. More, more, more importantly, I hope you've learned something. And I hope you realize that you can't do anything about Congress. You can't do anything about the Ukraine. You can't do anything about what Chairman Powell does. You can't do anything about the Hamas-Israeli war. Help a little, but you can't control it. There are things you can control. Control those things. You can control your dividends. You can control the amount of risk you buy. You can control your fees. And you can control what you understand about your money. I'm Chip Stites, and this is The Laughing Retirement, and I hope you'll join us. <laughs>